Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to be taking a look at photorespiration. Now the word itself can tell us a lot about what's going on here. So photo meaning light and respiration meaning the consumption of oxygen and the production of carbon dioxide. So oxygen going in, carbon dioxide coming out. Now in order to really understand what's going on with photorespiration, we kind of have to go back and look at the Calvin cycle because the Calvin cycle is involved with photorespiration. You're going to see exactly how involved it is in just a moment. So when we look at our um, Calvin cycle here, we see the three phases of Calvin cycle, which include the carbon fixation phase, um, then you have your reduction phase, and then finally you have your regeneration phase. So the three phases that we saw in the Calvin cycle. Now key parts are the fact that the RUBP molecule, the five carbon 5-carbon RUBP is going to be um, connected to carbon dioxide using the Rubisco enzyme. So the Rubisco enzyme is huge, 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 huge involved in photorespiration. Um, so here you take the RUBP and a carbon dioxide molecule and you get a 6-carbon intermediate. So you can see the 5 carbons from the RUBP and then the carbon from carbon dioxide. So now you have your 6-carbon intermediate that will then become your um, PGA. Then reduction will occur we'll first, where first phosphorylation using ATP will create this and then reduction um, taking the NADPH and replacing one of the phosphates with hydrogens and reducing, therefore reducing it until you get your G3P. The G3P, one G3P leaves, um, the other G3Ps are used to regenerate your RUBP so that way the cycle can go over and over and over again. So key parts, again, to remember are your RUBP, your rubisco, and carbon dioxide. And that's what gets you your goal of the Calvin cycle, which is your G3P, your sugar. And that G3P, remember, can be used for many, many things afterwards, including making glucose. So photorespiration, here's where I said that it involves the Calvin cycle. It basically is the Calvin cycle, except the Calvin cycle has been hijacked by oxygen instead of carbon dioxide. So here we see our regular Calvin cycle, RUBP, carbon dioxide, Rubisco helps the cat catalysis of these two coming together, and you have your PGA, add some ATP and NADPH, makes your sugar, and the cycle co goes back and again and again and again. With photorespiration, it is the Calvin cycle, but instead of incorporating carbon dioxide, it incorporates oxygen instead. So instead of carbon fixation, we have oxygen fixation instead. So oxygen is going to go in um, with RUBP, and Rubisco is going to help catalyze and connect these two together. So it's going to connect oxygen to RUBP instead of carbon dioxide. Um, you form PGA and another product. ATP and NADPH are used to turn it into PGA, but not as many PGA as what we saw in the first um, with the original Calvin cycle. That also produces carbon dioxide as well. Um, ATP is used to get the PGA back to RUBP but it's dead end because we didn't get anything beneficial really out of here. All it did was create some carbon dioxide and that was it. And there's no sugar here. And that's the whole point of the Calvin cycle is that goal to get the sugar made, get that G3P made and then use it to do other things. So here it's a bad thing. So photorespiration is not a good thing. It's the, the best way to think of it is the oxygen hijacking, taking over the Calvin cycle and nothing productive coming over out of it. So the, the worst parts about this is the fact that ATP gets used up. Remember ATP is the cell's energy currency. So we're using up energy on a dead end process and it produces small amounts of carbon dioxide instead of sugar. So what exactly makes photorespiration a problem? So what's the cause of all this? It has to do with heat, stomata, and um, the Rubisco enzyme. So uh, stomata, remember, are holes in the leaves that allow carbon dioxide to go in and oxygen to exit out. During the day, the stomata are going to be open. At night, stomata close. And the reason for that has to do with the light-dependent reactions. Remember, the Calvin cycle cannot happen unless the light-dependent reactions happen. So it makes the most sense for the stomata to be open, allowing carbon dioxide to come in during the day, because the products from the light-dependent reaction, the ATP and the NADPH, are going to be used in order to drive the Calvin cycle. Um, so at night, when the light-dependent reactions aren't happening, you're not making ATP, you're not making NADPH, close the stomata so that way you're not wasting energy and stuff isn't getting all eaten up, used up. Um, so they stay closed at night. The uh, Rubisco enzyme 
going over the slightly bigger name, it's not the full name here, but RUBP oxygenase and carboxylase. That tells us, remember the ACE tells us that this is an enzyme. Um, in this case, it's telling us that it can bind oxygen and it can also bind carbon dioxide. So that's gonna be a huge problem and that's what's gonna lead basically to photorespiration. So when it gets hot, uh, heat causes the stomata to close. And the reason that the stomata close is because when it gets hot, there's excess water loss out of the stomata. So that's a way that water can exit out of the plant. Now that process of water loss out of the stomata is called transpiration. And it's not really a bad thing unless it's a really hot day and it's losing a lot of water from this process. So it's kind of similar, you can think of it like sweating. Um, the way we sweat in order to cool down, plants do that when it's really hot, they release excess water that helps cool down the leaf just like sweat helps um, cool down us by going onto our skin and um, helping heat go away from our body. Same thing for the leaf, for plants. And it's also what helps move water from the roots all the way through a plant uh, in order to get to the leaves. It involves cohesion and, ad and adhesion of water molecules that keeps the water flowing um, up from the roots and through the plant. Um, so transpiration really isn't a bad thing unless it's losing a lot of water. And that's what happens on hot, dry days. So plants close the stomata to prevent excess water loss. Second thing, heat causes the rubisco enzyme to change shape just a little bit, and that change of shape allows it to bind to oxygen better than carbon dioxide. So the problem is carbon dioxide, when the stomata are closed on a hot, dry day, can't get in, and oxygen begins to build up inside of the leaves. You should see a problem already here. So the combination of those two, closed stomata and change in shape of rubisco enzyme, means that it's more likely to bind oxygen than it is carbon dioxide and lead to the dead end process of photorespiration here. Okay, so rubisco more likely to bind oxygen than CO2. All right, now there's three categories of photosynthesis, uh, three categories of plants. So you can actually take plants and put them into one of these three categories um, based on how they do photosynthesis. So first there's C3 plants, and that's what most of your plants are. So almost any plant you can think of, you're probably thinking of a C3 plant. And what they do is the normal thing that you've been taught with Calvin cycle. So they do carbon fixation uh, where they produce your PGA, which is a three carbon uh, product here, and it uses the Rubisco enzyme. Okay, so Rubisco is used in order to create this. C4 photosynthesis involves uh, plants such as corn and sugarcane. And what happens here is there's two times that carbon gets fixed into molecules. The first time is going to produce a four carbon molecule called malate. So malate here, you can see one, two, three, four. And this first carbon fixation is gonna involve a different enzyme called PEP carboxylase. And its name tells us that it's only going to deal with carbon dioxide. So here's, here's a solution here on its way. It's not gonna bind oxygen. So carbon fixation in this case is not gonna even bind oxygen um, because it doesn't have an affinity for it at all. all right, and then there's cam photosynthesis um, that, include, that occurs in plants such as pineapple and agave and other cacti. And here there's also two times that carbon gets fixed into molecules. The first time it get fi gets fixed into a molecule, it gets fixed into four carbon malate. So same thing as we saw in the C4. Um, photosynthesis and it still uses PEP carboxylase um, but there's gonna be slight differences that we see. So let's take a quick close, closer look at these two. So C3 photosynthesis, there's no real solution to um, photorespiration. So basically on hot dry days the plant just suffers a um, slow production of sugars. Uh, the good thing is though, remember uh, when plants make G3P uh, can turn it into glucose and then it could turn it into sucrose and store um, the energy that way. So that's when it can basically turn to its sugar storage and get energy out of that. C4 photosynthesis, the solution here is a pretty cool one. It separates carbon fixation um, from the rest of the Calvin cycle. Uh, so carbon is fixed twice, and in this case, it happens in mesophyll cells, and then it sends the malate to um, bundle sheath cells. So here, basically, we see separate initial carbon fixation from the rest of the Calvin cycle, so oxygen does not have a chance to interfere. 
Carbon dioxide gets fixed twice. First fixation in the mesophyll cells using the PEP carboxylase, which only binds carbon dioxide, not oxygen. And that's going to create four, uh, four carbon malate. So it creates malate. And the carbon's been fixed into that malate. Then malate goes to the bundle sheath cells. So if we take a look at this picture here, here's a mesophyll cell. Um, carbon dioxide goes in, and PEP carboxylase is going to turn it into malate. So carbon dioxide is now fixed into the malate uh, molecule. The malate then gets sent to the bundle sheath cells where it's going to break off the carbon dioxide and send it into the normal Calvin cycle that we learned about and um, create another product that goes back and can be used again and again in order to fix carbon dioxide. So here's where the second carbon fixation comes in. So it's going to go in, Rubisco is going to do its thing where it binds it with your RUBP and go through the cycle in order to create your sugar. Um, the mesophyll cells are located more towards the outside of the uh, leaf, whereas the bundle sheath cells are located more towards the inside of the leaf, and there's less oxygen that gathers in this area. So you could still use Rubisco and the RUBP and the carbon dioxide, and it would be perfectly fine. So we've separated the, um, the, fix, the initial fixation and allowed oxygen not to be involved at all. All right, CAM photosynthesis. Uh, this involves not doing fixation in a different place in order to prevent oxygen from interfering, but here this involves doing it at a different time. Okay, so carbon fixation at night when the stomata are open, carbon dioxide can enter and oxygen can exit. So what we're seeing is stomata opening at night. And that might throw you off a little bit because that doesn't make sense, right? If the stomata are open at night, and there's no light, light dependent reactions aren't happening, what's going on? You can't, you can't create um, sugars if there's no light dependent reactions happening, um, but there's a solution to this. Okay? So by opening at night, that means there's no competition. The, the carbon, plenty of carbon dioxide can come in, um, plenty of oxygen can leave, and um, there's no excess water loss either. And what we see, most CAM photosynthesis plants are going to be in really hot, dry places, places like deserts where opening the stomata during the day would just re release so much water. Um, so it makes sense to open it at night, less water loss, no competition between carbon dioxide and oxygen, plenty in, uh, plenty of oxygen out. Carbon dioxide gets fixed twice, once again. First fixation happens in the mesophyll cells. PEP carboxylase is the enzyme that helps create malate. So it sounds just like C4, but then here's where it gets different. So the malate, instead of being sent to bundle sheath cells and going through the normal everyday Calvin cycle, malate gets sent to vacuoles within the cell. So they leave the uh, chloroplast and go into vacuoles where the malate gets stored. And then during the day, the malate gets released. It goes back to the chloroplast where it goes through um, normal Rubisco involved the Calvin cycle. Okay, so if we take a look at this picture here, um, we see at night the stomata are open, carbon dioxide and PEP carboxylase form malate. Malate gets stored in the vacuole, and then during the day the malate gets released and the uh, malate gets torn apart, carbon dioxide gets released, and um, the other molecule is created. The carbon dioxide enters into the Calvin cycle just like normal. So Rubisco is going to connect it to RUBP, and it's going to go through the entire cycle. All right, that is it for um, our types of photorespiration.